All right, ladies and gentlemen, so welcome to part two of lesson 16. And uh, in this lesson, we are going to be diving into the outer join uh, and describe it a little bit and, uh, and, and you know, try to understand the merits of using an outer join. And uh, also, we're going to touch very briefly on the cross join, which is something that I don't use very often, but uh, you'll see uh, an explanation of what it is, at least a little bit of an explanation. So let's, uh, let's dive right into it. Let's talk about the outer join, and for now, what we're going to focus on is the left outer join. As I said before, it's the most commonly used of all the different types of outer joints, the different subtypes of outer joints. Um, and I say here, note that all concepts that can be applied to the left join or left outer join can be applied to the right join as well. It's just in reverse, if you, if you catch my drift. So everything that I'm saying here about the left join is exactly true about the right join. It's just you need to sort of flip around um, the concepts is all. Okay, so left join, right join are really the same thing. It's just they are in reverse. So for example, since this is the left join, and you can see this is all the highlighted area would be what you would get as part of the left join. If you were to flip this around and make this a right join, then what would happen is table A in this area to the left of the intersection between the two of them, so this whole area here which is shaded, uh, would not be shaded. Just like it is in table B, this would not be shaded. Instead, table B would be shaded in its entirety and uh, only the uh, regular old uh, individual unique stuff in table A would not be shaded. So that would be the equivalent of the right join. But since we're talking about left join, this is what we uh, see as being the left join. So, the difference between an inner join and uh, an outer join is that the uh, the outer join is less less strict. Okay, again, I'll say that again. Inner join is more strict, outer join is less strict in terms of the result set, the, the results that you get back once you perform the join. So a left outer join will return all the data from the left table, all the data from the left table, as well as any matching data from the right-hand side table. Okay, so the, the key thing to note here is that the left join, the left outer join, those are synonymous. You can say left outer join or just left join. Um, left join will return all of the data from the left-hand side table. All of it. Regardless of if there is a matching set of data on the right or not. Now that is something I probably should have written into those slides because that's a very good way to explain it. A left join will return all the data from the left table regardless if, of if there is a matching set on the right. Okay? So, the best way to explain this is obviously by example, so let's hop into a real-world example. So again, let's take our example of situation from before, where we have the same user table and the same address table with the exact same information. We have tpage, jdoe, and the uh, rows from um, the, uh, the, the address table that we had before. Nothing has changed. So let's pretend that we're performing a left outer join, or a left join, again, those are synonymous, on the user ID column, between, oh, I didn't mean to highlight between as being a code word, uh, column between the user and address tables. So left out of join on user ID between user and address tables. What would that look like? Well, if you remember in the inner join scenario, we only had two rows that matched. But here, in the uh, when you do a left join, we have three rows that match. Because remember, the left join returns all the data from the left-hand side table. This is our left-hand side table. This uh, user's table is on the left, and um, you know it's, it's on the left physically here, but I'll show you what on the left means when we're actually doing it in syntax, because it's not as obvious in syntax. Um, but this is the left-hand side table, so this is the user table. So we want to, since we're using a left join, we will always see all of the data, all of the rows from the left-hand side table. Okay, always when we use the left join. Um, so that's exactly what we're seeing here. We see both the T page as well as the JDO rows because we're using the left join. It would not be a left join if we did not see both of these rows. Does that make sense? Hopefully that does. Whereas the inner join, it is more strict. So we did not see both rows returned. Remember, we did not see a JDO row returned when we did a, um, an inner join because it is more strict. So, 
hopefully I'm beating that that concept to death and um, and we can move on here so let's again performing the left outer join this is the result set so the first thing to note is that obviously we have three rows which is what I just explained instead of the two with the inner join but one what I haven't explained is the that the second thing you should note is that the third row has a bunch of null values for its address data so you see Actually, what, what I can tell you for, with confidence is that the first two rows are exactly the same um, as the inner join. Okay, we have all the same data from the first two rows, which is for the T page living in Toronto, Ontario, as well as Chicago, Illinois, and the user ID one with the, you know, this uh, column name as well as the data. All of this, the, you know, the data in the first two rows are the same from the inner join. The only difference is we need to include all the rows from the left hand side table since we're using the left outer join. So what does that look like? Well we get the th the uh, all the rows which is the second row inside of the uh, user table. So we see the JDO row, okay, which is right here represented by this data here. And we also get the quote unquote matching data from the right hand side table. But because user ID 2 does not have any corresponding user ID 2 rows in the address table, there's nothing to pull in uh, to display um, for the matching result set. Okay, so the matching result set has just null, 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 null. Because it wouldn't make sense to fill in any of this data with anything at all. Because, I mean, what would you put there? There would be nothing that would make sense to put there because JDO does not have any address information um, stored inside of our database table, inside of the, inside of the uh, address table. There's no data for him. So all that makes sense to display is just a bunch of nulls okay so that is the left outer join for you cool all right now let's talk about the third uh, major type of join which is the cross join which is what i said i never never used before um, and like i say here the cross join is rarely used in practice i've never needed to use it before the cross join returns something called the cartesian product of the two tables now what that means is it's literally just a representation of every single possible match between the two tables. Okay, so if you were to think of it, uh, you know, logically speaking, you take row one from table A and match it individually with every single row from table B. Okay, row one, row two, row three, row four. So you have like, essentially you'd have like a one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five situation going on. And then you go down to the next uh, row in table A, which is ta uh, row two. And do the exact same thing, match it with uh, row one, row two, row three, row four, row five of table B. Um, so you have two one, two three, or sorry, two one, two two, two three, two four, and then three one, three two, three three, three four, four one, four two, four. You get the idea here. Um, that is the cross join. So with a cross join, our data set uh, from the last slides would look like this. You would have uh, row one, which is the T page, matched with row one of table two or table B which is, uh, you know, this stuff. So that makes sense. We have T page living at Toronto, Ontario. That's a valid uh, situation. But then you'd also have row two, which is J Doe matched with row one of table B, which is the Toronto, Ontario match. So, I mean, that, that actually does not make sense, right? Because we just said that J Doe does not have any addresses. Yet here, when we use a Cartesian product, uh, the cross join, he does have an address. So this is... Like I said, there, there's there's very few uh, uses for a cross join, um, and the result set above is, is deceiving. Like I said, because user ID two J Doe has actu no actual matching rows in the address table, yet user ID two here has two rows in that result set. So you see J Doe is matched with uh, address one as well as address ID two. Okay, and that again, this is just a cross join. It's a Cartesian product. There are very few times when you'd actually want to use this. Um, I think a you know. <sighs> use cases for this one when you'd actually want to use a Cartesian product. Um, oh God, they probably, you know, make sense in some sort of reporting um, uh, situations where you'd want to, you know, create a report based on some sort of, I don't know, sales information um, where you have, oh God, I'm backing myself into a corner here because I've never used a Cartesian product. Um, let me not even, not, I'm not even going to try to, you know, think of an example. If you are really curious about the cross join, then by all means you can do um, some Googling around to see when cross joins would be used. Uh, but like I said, I never use cross joins um, because I, I've just never needed to before. All right, cool.
So having said that, let's end uh, the tutorial, the lecture here uh, for part two, and let's move on into part three, where we're going to see a little bit more about the real differences between the inner join and the outer join, and uh, I will leave you with some of the actual syntax that you'll use uh, in, in all these cases so that you can get yourselves familiar with it. So, very good. Thank you very much for listening, and I will see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.